How you doing? Thanks for joining me. In this video, I am going to continue on with an example that I had done in a previous video where we sized the main feeder uh, conductor for a bank of motors. What I want to focus on in this video is actually calculating what these individual tap conductors are at each one of these branches, right? Because the branch circuit is defined as the portion in between the final overcurrent device and the point of utilization. So for example, all of this down in here would be our branch circuit conductor. Okay, up here, this would be my tap conductor. From this individual, or this, uh, this motor bank feeder conductor, we wanna downsize that without having to put an overcurrent device in there. 14100 tells me that I cannot downsize a conductor um, without putting an overcurrent device unless I meet very specific uh, rules or exceptions. And in this case, we're not using 14100 specifically, we're using 28. 110, which is our rule that tells, tells us how to deal with tap conductors for motor circuits. Okay, so we're going to put a couple of numbers on here just so we have some different lengths of tap conductors. This one we're going to say is 2 meters. This one we're going to say is 3.5 meters. This one we'll say is 2 meters as well. And this one we're going to say, wow, 8 meters. Let's go 8 meters because that's a fair distance there. Okay, so 28110 breaks it down into whether or not your tap conductor is three meters or less, okay, or really between three meters up to 7.5 meters. Okay, so let's take a look at our first one here. We have a 36 amp FLA. It is a continuous duty rated motor, okay. I'm gonna have to first size the branch circuit for this individual motor because it tells me for three meters or less, I'm allowed to apply, if it's less than three meters, the branch circuit calculation from 28106, and that will be sufficient for a tap conductor. Okay? In the previous video, we determined that this main feeder okay, was a, actually we'll go down here, was a three aught, which had an opacity of 200 amps. Okay? And that's a descriptive video on how to walk through the steps to calculate that uh, main feeder for this entire bank, okay? But it's important to know when we do this next step. Well, not this next step, but when we move over to this one here. So, again, 28110 tells me for under three meters long, I'm allowed to apply just the branch circuit to this calculation, okay? So, 36 amps, and I'm gonna multiply it by 1.25, because according to 28106, for continuous duty rated motors, I'm gonna apply 125% to the FLA. That's my minimum ampacity. We should see 45 amps is our minimum ampacity, which when we go table two, 75 degree column, we are gonna pick ourselves a number 10 gauge that, or sorry, not a number 10 gauge, rather a number eight gauge. Okay, we're gonna go with a number eight gauge that's good for 50 amps, okay? So that's my branch circuit conductor, and because I'm less than two meters on my tap, I can also use a number eight gauge for a tap conductor here as well. Okay, onto my 40 amp FLA continuous duty. We're gonna do the same thing because it's a continuous duty. We're gonna take 40 amps, multiply it by 1.25, which gives us 50 amps. Now again, that tells me we would go with a number eight, good for 50 amps, but there's one thing we need to keep in mind, okay? We are, between three meters and 7.5 meters. Okay, and there's something special we gotta do there. When we're between three meters and 7.5 meters, we're gonna go either the branch circuit size or one third the feeder ampacity. Whichever is bigger, okay, becomes the minimum ampacity for this tap conductor. Okay, three meters or less, what we did here. Really, it's just whatever your branch circuit is. Okay, that'll suffice as a tap conductor. So, we have a choice now between a number eight or one third this feeder ampacity. So, we're going to take that divided by three, gives us 66.67 amps, which if I was to go to table two and size a conductor based off of that one third ampacity, I would select a number four. Good for 85 amps. We're just over that number six size. So I have a choice at this tap right here of either a number four or a number eight. Again, I'm gonna pick the larger. We're gonna go with a number four. 
for this tap right here. Now we move into our non-continuous motors. Okay, I'm going to switch to a different color here. For our non-continuous motors, I've left the calculations up from the previous video where we went to table 27 and we determined that for our short time duty of five minutes, we had 110% multiplier, okay, which gave us 55 amps. Now 55 amps, I can take that now to table two and I can select from there, I can go with a number six, which is good for 65 amps, okay. And again, we're under three meters. So here, a number six will suffice as a tap conductor, okay. Again, I'm compare. I'm not comparing it because we're three meters or less. Then we get to our last value here. We have our 60 amp intermittent duty, 15 minutes, which gave us a multiplier from table 27 of 85%. Okay, 60 amps times 85% gave us 51 amp minimum ampacity for our branch circuit. So we can go to table two and size our branch circuit, which was, or sorry, which should be again a number six because we're just over that number 850 amps. So we're going to go with a number 665 amps. Again, that's my branch circuit. From here to here, I'm okay to get away with a number six. From here to here, I'm okay to get away with a number six as well. Now, we're eight meters on our tap on this particular installation, which means that I can no longer apply the tap conductors from 28110. I can't apply those rules. I would actually see this conductor would be equal to, I would have a three aught good for 200 amps because I exceed that 7.5 meters. I'm not allowed to apply those exceptions in that case. Okay, so hopefully this has helped um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.